Hello YouTube. Um, just a quick video on my thoughts on layering and what to wear for outdoors in the mountains in wintertime, mountaineering, skiing, backcountry, resort. Um, kind of kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, not to make this too long, just real quick, uh, show you show you some of some of my gear that's that I've got going on here. I have always thought of thought of layering and thought of my outerwear as a, as a system that works together. I've never had a, uh, a ski jacket. You know, I've always had uh, you know things things that work together. You know, for instance, you know the you know the the North Face shell, the shell pants that would work with an insulation layer that'll work with a base layer. Um, because that's that's the that's the heart of the story in layering, is that you want to, you need to balance. You need to balance the uh, the work and the effort that you are doing. You're producing heat. You're producing uh, moisture. You need to balance that with the outside temperature. And whether that's just temperature or whether that's whether that's wind as well, uh, it's always a balance. And when you are when you're you're climbing uphill, you're working hard, you're producing a lot of heat, and you need less layers. When you are sitting on a chairlift going up, you're uh, you're not producing heat, and you require more layers. You require different insulation. So, kind of just thoughts on you know how it all how it all works and fits together. Um, at the basis of it, uh, you're gonna have different layers. You're gonna have a skin contact layer. Which is you know this is underwear, which is what fits uh, or directly uh, directly next to your skin. You know, there's the saying "cotton kills" uh, to not ever wear cotton because it it holds on to moisture and doesn't doesn't let go of it. Um, you know, it's all it's a synthetic nylon that you're that you're looking for, whether it's you know polypropylene, capline, nylon, whatever. You know, there's so many different brand names and, and materials but uh, basically something that's not going to hold on to water it's going to uh, act as a, a skin layer insulation but also uh, as a as a transport to, to move water away and vapor away from from your skin so I generally wear you know say like a nylon or polypro um, underwear I'll wear these you know North Face uh, long johns a top layer whether it's a short sleeve or long sleeve uh, that'll be my skin layer. Next to come would be uh, close-fitting insulation layer, and uh, this is this is wool, merino wool. It's a brand I like a lot, Smart Wool. They they do a great job, uh, whether it's natural prop, natural uh, fiber like that, or a, or a fleece, you know, like this one. Again, it's very snug fitting. Um, you know, waffle cut, uh, waffle cut, uh, really really warm base layer. Um, I would wear. Either of those two, if I'm doing something active, backcountry skiing or you know splitboarding, whatever. Um, what I what I use this for if I'm resorts, if I'm on my snowboard at the resort, um, I'll wear this sweater. Again, it's a synthetic sweater that uh, breathes really well, provides insulation. Yet is a little bit heavier for uh, you know that tends to be less active, and you're not producing as much heat. You need to conserve your heat. Um, also, really really do like this vest. Which uh, helps keep helps you know keep insulation uh, on on your core, keep your core uh, warm. I do like vests an awful lot. The Colorado tuxedo they call that, right? Um, down sweater uh, certainly certainly do see a lot of those, and, and they're really really worthwhile as well. Uh, the thing about that is you don't want to work out in it if you're if you're climbing uphill. Uh, and you're wearing you're wearing this down. It's going to get clammy. It's going to get cold, and it's going to lose its insulation qualities, and um, just not not work very well. So that's the kind of thing that you would you would put on at a break. You know, you stop for lunch or stop for snack or water, or whatever, and you uh, you layer up. You know, one of the things talking you know talking about heat and, and managing all that is you know I tell my kids all the time that you want to stay warm, not get warm, and so it's all. All a balancing act of uh, conserving, conserving the heat that you've got going on. Um, back to back to base layers. 
you know, here's some socks that I like to use. Uh, again, Smart Wool is a, is a great brand that I that I like an awful lot. Merino wool. Uh, these are Patagonia wool socks. Those are ski specific socks, but they're they're nice and high. And um, I don't tend to like bulky socks. Um, boot fit and shoe fit is uh, it's a very important thing for comfort, and I tend to like the more trim type of socks. So that's that's where I start with that. And then talking about other other things or other concepts in in mountaineering, you you need to be ready and, and available or prepared for uh, many many different uh, conditions. You know, it could be uh, sunny and sunny and bright, and you know that's why that's why you would need you know a, a ball type ball type cap. You know, keep sun out of out of your out of your face and off your face. Um, but you also need to be prepared for you know whiteout blizzard, and by that I mean uh, you need to be able to cover every every piece of exposed uh, of exposed skin. You know, so uh, for that I will use a balaclava. You know, it can cover up your face, and in combination with goggles, you can um, you know even cover up your nose. The goggles will sit on top of the balaclava, and you will be covered. But you, yeah, needing to be able to cover every every inch of exposed skin. Um, so other other headgear, um, I always have a, in addition to a ball cap style hat, I always have a, a fleece beanie. This is a merino wool neck gaiter that helps helps conserve conserve heat. Uh, for gloves, I always have. You know, if, if I'm doing something backcountry or from hiking or splitboarding. Um, always have a light, light pair of gloves for climbing, and then I've got my insulated uh, gloves. Uh, if things are really, really, really bad, I might take uh, insulated mittens, but uh, these, these are, these are great and work wonders. Uh, there's a liner with a waterproof shell with these. This is a Black Diamond brand, and I love those an awful lot. And you know, just a, just a couple words on brands. Um, some of my gear here is, uh, you know, closing in on 20 years old. You know, for instance, my my shell. Um, I don't have a whole lot of money to spend on gear, so I like to make wise choices and make my dollar make it last. So yeah, this shell is coming up on on 20 years. I'm a weekend warrior, so it's not like I'm using it every single day and wearing it, wearing it out. But um, it's a it's a quality quality item that is that has lasted me well. Uh, so North Face, Patagonia, Arcteryx, you know, those are those are some brands that that I think have lots and lots of life and durability. Um, okay, moving on. What else is going on here? Uh, pants, you know. So I talked about the you know the long unders. This is a pair of REI climbing pants. They're stretchy. Um, I would probably upgrade those. My, one of my next purchases might be like a like a soft shell. Um, stretchy pant, whether it's a climbing pant or something, that I could still wear underneath my shell. I talked about all that. Um, these are my shell pants. Those are non-insulated, but they are waterproof and they work really, really well. This is my Gore-Tex uh, uh, upper shell. It's hooded. And one thing, one thing about uh, any hooded items, um, Again, a next a next purchase maybe uh, for an insulation layer to be hooded, but anything that's hooded you want to be able to fit. Take into consideration either it's going to fit underneath your your helmet or it's going to fit over your helmet. Um, the shell certainly has to have a hood. The outer the outer protective layer certainly needs to have a hood that'll fit over uh, whatever whatever helmet you might be wearing, whether it's whether it's a ski snowboard helmet or a, or a more mountaineering rock climbing type helmet. And then the last layer, this would be something uh, for something doing really, really, uh, really alpine, which I do have my goal set on. I want to, I want to get up to the top of Rainier, and this would be, uh, you know, uh, uh, a real heavyweight, puffy, insulation layer. So, you know, I'm, I'm climbing. I'm, I've got to uh, a, a belay station or a place where we're going to bivy for a while. Um, the puffy will go over the ex the the shell layer. If if it's good weather, if it's if it's bad weather, it'd have to go under the 
the exterior la layer. But again, it's hooded. Um, you've got to be able to uh, you know, throw the hood over your head, conserve all your heat, and that's that's part of that's part of that layer. Um, another thought that a lot of people, a lot, a lot of people have been doing. I'm just I'm just kind of catching up to it. Is rather than relying on a super heavyweight sleeping bag, um, you're you're bringing you're, you're bringing all this gear with you anyway. Uh, you can go with a lighter weight bag and wear wear your your insulation layer uh, as you sleep. As a matter of fact, last time I camped, it was not super cold, but I think it got down to about 30 uh, overnight, and I ended up sleeping in in this down coat uh, as a as an added insulation layer. So that's it. Just wrapping up real quick. Those are my my thoughts and uh, uh, explanation on the outerwear for a mountaineering type clothing setup.